All right. I am also pretty excited about this match. Ango's my boy, and as he said, he's pretty good. But Macken, Macken, quite a good player himself, and I do like watching him. So this is gonna be pretty good. This might even be the most interesting match of this set, or maybe not. If you find people getting steamrolled, then I will visit Macken versus what? Shane aside. I can pick him up a quick 66. I think Squirtle might be the best character to deal with um, Inkling. Definitely good on size, definitely good on combos, and I find that he's going grab. Absolutely atrocious. Switch it to the Ivy though and pick up a nice amount of damage. I can stop making it easy though. Having an excellent amount of lick shot and trying to finish him off. I do like what Angle did to make that recovery back though. You always gotta make some up on Angle going try hard mode right now. Not trying to let what happened last tournament repeat itself. Pretty good. Alright, Mac and fishing for the back airs a lot, but so far he's been unpunished, but could this be it? Nope. Mac and starting ledge trap though and throwing him immediately off ledge. This could be rough since he's Zard right now. He burned all his jumps, but he was still able to con He's still able to get conversions and Oh yeah, he went out there. Really for that in SD. Still like, a respectable respect one hundred percent on Mackie. Still building, so this could be a little more rough. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I feel like those jab locks are even more crucial online because it's harder to tech. Angle not letting the opportunity go. Very nice, very nice. Oh yeah, I like how I like how uh, Mackin positioned himself to still get that follow up despite the fact that he was gonna smash attack. I like how aware he is. So far, Angle playing a very solid game though. Mackin is putting on a pretty ooh. No solid game anymore. Mackin is leading the neutral. I really like the switches here, I think they're pretty good. And ooh, Mackin maybe accidentally even going off stage, but we're getting station coming quite quickly and getting the up smash. Alright, we immediately have a, a chance to Zard. I wonder if Ango's gonna stick to this. I feel like he, he m maybe should have switched because his early percent combo would have been a little easier, but Ango's still putting on the big damage. Oh my goodness. Alright. I think Ango was doing a really good job, a really fantastic job, being aggressive and leading the neutral, but I think he got too thirsty, and Mackin did not let it go. Every time he got too thirsty, he, he Ango either SD'd or Mackin punished him for it, and the first game goes to Mackin. Yeah, Ango a little too thirsty. I feel like if he took his foot off the gas, he, he I'm not I'm not sure if he would have won, but he definitely would have not just died like that, considering that he had a nice teamwork. Yeah, Ango Ango's gotta pull off the gas just a little bit. I feel like I feel like his advantage state was good there, but <laughs> he just wanted to kill. Oh my goodness. But yeah, I mean patience is a very big part of platform fighters in general and of course, ultimate. Everyone's good. Everyone is going to camp. So, yep. Oh, boy. Is that right? I don't know. Oh, my freaking head hurts, dude. Oh, man. I don't know why. Just got some head pain.
so we are coming in to game two. Um, this is one of those finals, so this actually does the fight. We see a bit of a longer match, but Ango, Ango, not in control so far. Ooh, I definitely like his fares out of um, disadvantage though. He quickly was able to get a nice turnaround on damage, but looking like a pretty much even game until now. That squirrel was lying and just gonna die to that. That up smash is not playing any rule for survival either. Again, not, not having taken so much damage, he's definitely to keep pushing this. He's gonna, gonna have to go off in order to achieve victory here. Keeping it patient, slowly inching up, but back in, back in taking his time. But again, that's what you gotta do. You got the lead, don't freaking approach it. You don't have to run away the whole time. Let him come to you. Go and go looking a little antsy for these kills, so a little more, but back in taking his time. Keeping it patient, making it hold again. Gotta kill him by a thousand cuts, and by the end of those thousand cuts, I'm paying the death. And I think, I honestly think that's what back is doing. That was a really good switch though, because too little too late though, and you know, Mackin's caught everyone's rolling with that. I'm not sure if people are not aware, but that's what they're me. Oh, not death. I think he was trying to get the charge to get a game to kill the charge limit. I feel like with the amount of rage that he had, he would have killed anyway. But regardless, Mackin's caught everyone with that uh, jab block roller read, and I think that's been pretty good working out for him. Charizard can kill pretty easily here, but. I feel like Mac can still just as easily get a kill. Not just a kill, but Mac can definitely play in the super patient angle going out there, really wanting to get this kill. Yeah. Angle only really had to win one interaction there in order to get the kill because of Charger, but he's still got a long way to go. Charger could definitely be the comeback factor here, but that's if he doesn't get grounded in combo. I feel like another up throw. Uh, nice little 20, and so far, um, he kind of jumping a lot. I wonder if I can catch him up on that. Man. This is a whole lot of nothing going on. There's a little bit of interaction here and there, but Mackin was able to turn one hit into was able to, uh, convert his advantage state into an immediate kill. Pretty good. Calling out that jump. Yeah. Go looking like he definitely was definitely looking like he should have taken that game one. Mackin, Mackin trying to solidify this lead here. Uh, going up 2-0 here could be really, really big. I I'm not 100 percent sure, but I definitely think the fact that those down tilts make score or those F tilts make score up take a little bit definitely could be contributing to why those back airs are missing. Even percents, but to be honest, uh, he has got to really pull out something here, or he's just going to continue to start taking little bits of damage. He's going to keep his all in a really big deficit. So far, oh my goodness. Okay, Mango able to get out of that, but I don't, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get out of it again. Going for the, honestly, all too risky side B. In a pressure situation like that, you gotta play it safe. Honestly, I wish he played that stock a little more like he played with Charizard's stock. Minus the part where he lost the exchange ultimately and died. But you really, 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 really gotta be patient there. Mackin goes up. Um, 2-0. We're gonna have to get a reverse 3-0 to see um, Ango Weezy win this.
right, here we go. We have the upgrade. So this is a choice by um, Ango. I definitely think this is overall pretty good for both characters, but I could totally see why Ango chose this. Ango already uh, trying to play the patient game. I definitely feel like it would be a little better for him to play like this if he were in the lead, but uh, yeah, I can still be able to slip in, but you know, I think I, what I've been noticing is that Ango has been doing a really good job of running that up there up there on the switch, and I believe it's frame one, so I think that's a perfect option. I know he's down a bunch of percent. I feel like the ledge trap here would be really important. I think Eggno should definitely wait because even though he's covering most options with that, I can still pick the perfect option. I feel like if he reacted there, he at least could have kept him off stage. And so far, this is looking a bit rough for Eggno. Not quite lost, but definitely a decent amount of deficit. Alright, Eggno switching is getting a good amount of combos, but I think he needs to be wary that he can die a bit earlier. Probably going for the tether recovery. Yeah. Ooh, Really good. Getting the advantageous position. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Really good play. You got this. Yep. <laughs> he is making very quick work of that stock. And um Yeah. Literally an even game right now. Both characters at zero. Alright, I definitely feel like that, that was a little bit of too much risk going on for Ango with those side beats there. He is putting on a good bit of damage there, but I feel like he was in a proper position to get punished when he was so close. But man, Ango popping off with Ivy, doing an excellent job this game. Ooh, I like how he ended up going for the Nair instead of the um, down air. Yep, going for a little bit of a hard reach, and going for the switch, back air or anything will do it here. Definitely fishing a little too much for that, but making very excellent use of these um, switches, not taking too much damage. If you can get the stock off here, that would be really big, but Mackin is not letting go too easily. I think Mackin knows what um, Ingo wants here. Either he's going to go for a last smash attack, or he's going to go for a grab. But now he can, just is going to go for anything. Now you can tell, definitely tell with, with a PT player when they're on the kill as soon as Zard comes out. Akin is dancing around this man though. Ango only has to win one interaction, but so far he's not been been either tying the interaction or he's been losing. Akin is slowly bringing that percent back. He might even be liable to die from a good uh, read or a roller kill. Mac can still have him take a lot of damage though. He can still pretty much die to anything strong coming from Ivy or a grab. Oh yep, he caught him retreating. Very good. He didn't have anywhere to go, honestly, so I definitely think that was the right move. But Mackin did not let him get that without too without paying a good price. Definitely looking like a bit of his inputs there. I definitely appreciate how Angle was able to avoid the immediate roller because Mackin has been just putting that on him every time he gets a lead. He's gonna have to do a lot to get the lead here, but so far, looking like he's doing a decent job. Oh my goodness! A super unfortunate FD. And? Uh, game three goes to Ango.
All right, here we go. Back to winners finals. Back to an even game where not so even anymore. Ango has Mac in in the corner, or he had him in the corner. But are we gonna see a death here? No. Oh my goodness. Mackin going for the hardest of lead sequences, but not quite getting it. I definitely feel like... Actually, I think that's the first time someone hadn't fallen for Mackin dashing back in that direction. But I feel like because Ango was in the corner, it would have been best to just wait there. But, um, Mackin still taking that first round. But I'm gonna lose losing that. Yep. That makes plenty of sense to because, um, Charizard, right? Very clever use to get down with, with the side, but unfortunately not able to do... Not able to get too much off of it. Alright, I'm not sure right angle just kept uh, raising the thing right there, but... Um, putting on a decent amount of damage, another conversion like that can even up the game. It's basically even, but back and still has a slight edge on the percent. safe bear and dash around for the opportunity and dash around for the punish, but I think that's really good. I definitely think that Ingo is trying to discourage him coming in with back air or dashing or using his really good dash because of Razor Leaf. And I think it's working out to an extent. But Mackin has still been able to move around that pretty well. Ango though, even though Mackin has been getting in, he has been forcing Mackin to approach a lot. So I definitely think that uh, Mackin's been doing a good job of uh, getting around the situation that he's put him in. Ango's definitely still keeping himself in a traditionally average situation. But going for going for the really bad get up option and nearly dying for it. Oh yeah. Ango going for the immediate kill there, but um, hopefully he can hopefully he can take the stock and uh, not take too much damage because this is going to be really crucial if he wants to win the game comfortably. It's not like he can't make a comeback, especially as but it's going to be rough. Zard comes out. Anything to kill here? And with a lot of platforms, not on a platform could be rough, but that jab is going to make a lot, a lot difference. Right, I definitely think that's the, the second time he's gone for the raw side B. He's got. I think he should completely avoid that. He's putting on insane damage, and first time Ango did not go for the switch to avoid that and taking a ton of damage. Even if Ango gets the kill right now, Mackin is still gonna have an incredible advantage. All right, I like how Ango was trying to be a little more patient there, but he's still he's still eating too much damage. This, this deficit might be a little too big. Trying, ooh, trying something, but ultimately, didn't work. And Mac and takes that 3 1. Great dominant if I, if I say. I think the first game was pretty close, and I think the last game. The last game probably was going to be close, but you never know because of the SD, but the game's both players.